Now, uh, I am representing uh, Missouri's 5th Congressional District, and I want to focus some attention before I close, uh, Madam Speaker, on a tragedy occurring in, in Missouri and the entire Midwest region, for that matter. Uh, currently, farmland and homes are underwater along the Missouri River, from Montana, Montana to my uh, home state of Missouri. And record snow melt runoff this spring, along with unexpected record rainfall in the Upper River Basin, filled up the reservoirs in eastern Montana and the Dakotas and forced the Army Corps of Engineers to release large amounts of water from the reservoirs to keep them from over flooding. That excess water has flowed downstream, creating a path of destruction in its wake. And levees have been breached in Iowa, Nebraska, and in my home state in northwest Missouri, causing flooding of farmland, road closures, including Interstate 29, and evacuations. More than 500,000 acres of land have been flooded in the seven states along the river. The high waters have moved eastward and further downstream in Missouri, causing high water flooding in Ray, Saline, and Carroll counties. I have gone to those areas. I have seen the flooding. I have looked at the fields that farmers would normally have corn growing uh, underwater. And, and if, if we're here in Washington twiddling our thumbs and the farmers in uh, Missouri and other states for that uh, matter are struggling just to make it and with, river, uh, with, with rivers still running above flood stage and soil saturated, forecasters have predicted this summer flooding season could rival the worst in U.S. history. Now that means that in what was called the Great Flood of 1993 during my term of mayor, of mayor uh, cost about $25 uh, billion in uh, damage. This would exceed $25 billion. Mm. The, ex the excessive high temperatures sweeping across the nation this week cannot ease concerns about river flooding. These high river levels are not going away anytime soon, and neither is the risk of flooding. There will be sustained high water along the Missouri River through August as the reservoirs continue releasing high volumes of water. Due to this high water and saturated soil, just a small amount of rain could trigger more flooding in areas that have already received record flooding in, in 2011. Obviously, we cannot plan for every natural disaster. However, we have the responsibility to take preventive measures whenever possible. The original purpose of these upper Missouri Basin dams was flood protection. Over the years, other priorities may have slipped. However, I believe now is the time to reevaluate the Corps of Engineers' management plans and once again place the safety and livelihood of people who live and work along the river first. Reservoir levels need to be lowered between October and April so that fewer releases are needed during the spring rain season. A goal of target releases should be that they not exceed any given flood stage downstream. And if releases above flood stage levels are required, then a maximum flow of no more than five feet over given flood stages for no longer than a 15 consecutive day, days could be set followed by five consecutive days below given flood stages. This cycle could be repeated as necessary and would reduce downstream damages. This or other contingency planning is needed to prevent events such as this year's from happening again. Now, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, we're here uh, dealing with uh, political, um, you know, I, I think uh, shenanigans is, is a word that would fit people out in the country, the real people, are struggling, whether it's through for flooding or unemployment, they are struggling, and the Congress of the United States needs to act. You know, one of the reasons we can't get anything done with jobs, as I mentioned earlier, or the flooding problem, is this bickering based on political affiliation. Here's one thing I learned. 
I'm always uh, watching Animal Channel and the Discovery Channel. My family makes fun of me. But I learned something a few years ago in watching the Discovery Channel. Bees cannot sting and make honey at the same time. <laughs> they either have to become stingers or honey makers. And what has happened here is that we become stingers, and therefore we're not making any honey or laws to help the American public. I yield back the balance of my time.